Okay. Our Father, our hearts are open to receive from you. Speak through these lips of clay. Give me, I pray, Father, clarity of thought and speech to, and to rightly divide the word of truth. Take us to another place, I pray. Thank you that this is good ground. We'll not hear only, but be doers of your word. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you agree with that prayer, say amen. amen. Proverbs 4 and 25, one verse. Uh, I'm going to read from the NIV, and then I'm going to read from the Amplified. The same verse, verse 25 of Proverbs 4. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. The Amplified puts it this way. Let your eyes look right on with fixed purpose and let your gaze be straight before you. King James Version uses eyelids. Let your eyelids be straight before you. I want to speak to you today from this topic. And help me, please. Uh, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, look and see. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody else the same before you take your seat. Look and see. Okay, go ahead and take your seat. Take your seat. I know somebody's like, it's about time. My feet are tired. I saw something funny on yesterday, and this is by no means to be an offense to anybody, so I'm, 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 I'm out here now, I'm going to say it, but it's intended, no, it was just funny, and basically somebody was commenting on social media, that I'm tired of all of these bishops uh, telling me, uh, you, you, look, you acting like God haven't been good to you just sitting there. And, 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 and I, I want you to know that I'm sitting here because I'm 300 pounds, and, and this is how I worship. I worship a little differently. <laughs> so uh, so uh, I, I, whether you're 300 pounds or, or uh, 150 pounds or what have you, I get it. After a while, you get tired standing. Um, but you know what? It's biblical to stand because the Levites stood in the sanctuary and they blessed the Lord. So we try to be biblical in what I do. Sometimes standing get, gives, gives you a, a position of, of being alert and paying attention and being honorable, even bowing. There are many gestures of praise and worship that are significant in scripture that we should give ourselves to. On last week, somebody just got that little joke. I just heard you laugh. Uh, on last week, or the, excuse me, last week you were blessed by Pastor Harrison Sanchez. Oh, I enjoyed him. I enjoyed, that's, that's my son. I enjoyed him so, so very, very much. I was with you, but online. Today's message is related to the recent series that I shared with you prior to being away. That series being entitled, Listen Up. God's gracious gift to us is the ability to hear, to hear, to hear the voice of God. And so we talked about hearing the voice of God for three weeks. True also is God's gracious gift to each of us in that God gives us the ability to see spiritually. God wants us all to hear and to see clearly. Can I get an amen? Isaiah put it this way in Isaiah 35 and 5. Uh, he pro, pro, uh, speaks forth the word of the Lord, says, Then the eyes of the blind shall be open, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. The psalmist said in Psalm 146 and 8, The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. Jesus put it this way, giving us his mission statement in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord or the year of God's favor. And to the apostle Paul, God gave this directive. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I will send you. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Let me pause for a moment that God got to deliver you from the people he sent you to. There's a revelation in that. Hey, Amen. I know I'm, an, I, I'm a, thank you, Lord. I, I, I'm a witness. I'm a witness that, that, that there are times that God must deliver you from the very ones he sent you to deliver the word of the Lord. And such was the case with Paul. And he said, I've just sent you to them to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified uh, by faith in me. Uh, hearing and seeing are spiritual things. It's a spiritual thing. Hearing and seeing are spiritual abilities. Now, we're not talking about the physical gift uh, uh, or blessing of hearing 
and, and seeing, that is with your natural ears and with your natural eyes. Our focus is on that, those spiritual ears and spiritual eyes. Uh, hearing and seeing our spiritual abilities, we find that some people can hear, but they cannot see. Hello, somebody. Amen. There's some folk who can hear, but they cannot see. Consider with me Luke chapter 24, uh, verses 13 through 17, and also verses 28 through 30. And in the interest of time, let me just set up the, the, the narrative this way and paraphrase. We've got some, some men who are traveling from Jerusalem, a seven-mile uh, journey to Emmaus. They're on the road to Emmaus, and this is the day that Jesus was resurrected from the dead. And they're talking among themselves, uh, you got seven miles to walk and you're going to have some conversation and they're talking about the events of the day when all of a sudden Jesus appears uh, they don't realize that it's Jesus because their eyes were holding or uh, they were restrained from seeing him but Jesus shows up joins their company and uh, basically just engages in conversation with them and they're like hey where you been haven't you heard what's been going on and so he walks with them and they get to uh, their their place of, of, of residence and Jesus would have kept on going. They invited him to come and be a part of, of, of uh, just showing hospitality, being a part of, of, of their, their, their home. And uh, it was late and said, come on, you can just kind of stick around here with us. And the Bible says that they sat at the table and at the breaking of bread, their eyes were open and they saw this one that they heard, but did not recognize or perceive to be Jesus. They saw that it was Jesus and what about it? And then he, then he vanishes. Ain't that just like Jesus? <laughs> now, he, he'll never leave you. He'll never say, forsake you, even if you can't see him. There are some folk then that can hear and refuse to see. Mm, 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 mm. I'm teaching you something. Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. We made reference of this passage when sharing the message, listen up. Uh, why do you speak to these in parables? Well, uh, I speak to you in parables because these have eyes to, or ears to hear but cannot hear, eyes to see but cannot see. In other words, they got ears to hear but they will not hear. They got eyes to see but they will not hear, uh, will not see rather. But you, you have been given to know, to understand, to perceive the mysteries of the kingdom. So we see, so we see that hearing and seeing has to do with the mysteries of the kingdom, even the deep things of God, the spiritual things of God. You know, it's a, a dangerous thing to have unseeing eyes. Just as it's dangerous to not be able to hear in such a time as this, it's dangerous for you and I not to see. God wants us to see. The message is titled, Look and See. Some folk are looking, but they can't see. God wants us to look and see. Um, it has to do with perceiving and perception. It has to do with understanding. Have you ever, uh, have you ever uh, been um, uh, uh, listening perhaps to somebody teaching, even as I'm teaching today, and you didn't quite grasp it, and then finally, ah, I see it now. That means I understand it. I perceive it. I not only hear what you're saying, I see what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. So God not only wants us to hear what he's saying, he wants us to see what he's saying. He wants us to see what he's doing. And I just believe that we need to be awakened in this hour, our ears sharpened, attuned to the voice of God, and then our spiritual revelation, our insight, our perceptions, our perspectives ought to be what God would reveal to us in this hour. I'm telling you, if you step out of this natural place and get into this spiritual dimension, God will open your eyes and give you to be discerning, to see what may be hidden, to see what's behind what's in front of you. Uh, you know, I just believe God will expose some things if we just walk with him. Aren't you tired of folk getting over on you? It's quiet up in here. Maybe you're the one getting over on people. But I just believe God's going to open our eyes to see some things that we will recognize a lie when it's a lie. I smile a whole lot. That's, that's a compliment I get often. I smile a whole lot. But just because I'm smiling don't mean I'm tickled. Sometimes I know exactly when folk are lying to me and lying on me. But I smile just the same. 
Some of you saw my post recently, and, and I meant that thing. I meant that thing. Just because just cause I'm treating you nicely <laughs> don't mean I trust you. <laughs> it's the Christ in me, not the slick in you. Mm -hmm. God will show you some things when you walk with him. Who is quiet up in here? Somebody feeling uncomfortable. You being exposed right now? Maybe not here, online. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, uh, Proverbs 29 and 18, uh, without a vision, people perish. The uh, English Standard Version puts it this way, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. We need prophetic insight, prophetic vision. We need a revelation. One translation puts it where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint or the people go wild. See, if your eyes are open, if your eyes are open, if your, if your eyes are open, then you can see. And if your eyes are open wide, you can see far. And if you see far, you can go far. That's a tweet, y'all. Why ain't you writing it? I don't even care because I tweeted it already. In anticipation of being with you today, I tweeted it on last night. If you can see far or when you see far, you can go far. God wants us to open our eyes. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 and 19 says, This I say, therefore, and testify of the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. This is the state of those who are spiritually blind, who, who, whose understanding is darkened. They don't, don't, they don't see uh, uh, who God is, and they don't see who they are, and they don't see what God has created them to be in him. And so then they walk in the futility of their minds, acting out whatever they think and whatever they desire and want to do. The Apostle Paul said it this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 6, but even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age, small g, God of this age, that would be Satan, the God of this age has blinded who do not believe. Those who are spiritually blind are unbelievers. They're not believing. Lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and, ourself, and, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Come on, believers. It's a good place for us to just praise the Lord. Aren't you glad that the light has been shown, shown that light has shined on you? And that the veil has been removed because the veil, uh, when we believe, when we turn to the Lord, the veil is removed. Seeing again is perceiving and understanding. In Mark chapter 8, verses 13 through 21, uh, we have uh, the disciples in this particular place. They had forgotten to take bread, and they did not have uh, more than one loaf with them. And so the Lord begins to speak to them, saying, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And they started reasoning among themselves, Is it because we don't have any bread? Is it because we kind of missed out? And Jesus had to kind of remind the disciples of some things that had just happened, like when he fed 5,000 5,000 men with two fish and five loaves of bread and then took up fragments. He said, how many fragments? How many fragments were left over? And uh, he says, well, there were, there were seven, there were, or, or 12 rather. And then he reminds them uh, about uh, how that when uh, they, he fed the 4,000, how many leftovers, fragments were taken up? Seven. And he was like, how is it that you do not understand? How is it that you do not perceive? Here I'm talking to you about the deep things of God, and you're concerning yourself about bread and what you're going to eat. He says, my God, did you not forget already? I already showed you how miraculous I am that I can provide resources for you. I can take two fish and five loaves of bread and 
uh, feed multitudes and have resources left over because he's God that knows how to stretch our resources. Oh my God, some of you, you're not seeing it even now. Did not he bless you in times past? Did not he make ways for you in the past? Did not he show up in the courtroom? Did not he heal your body? Did not he provide for you even with you when you were without a job? And here we are, 16 months into a pandemic, but did not God keep you? Why concern yourself with the things of this age? Why concern yourself with being worried and anxious? Don't, don't worry, don't be anxious. He says, I'm the living bread and I provide for you everything that you have need of. We got to perceive it and then we got to understand it. We got to perceive and we've got to understand it. You know, if you fail to see, if you fail to see it, then you'll miss out on the blessings that God has in store for you. Furthermore, uh, if, if you're not seeing, if you're not seeing, then you can become anxious. You can become fearful. Here's a passage. You know this passage, Bible students. It's in 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 15 through 17. We got the prophet Elisha. He's the real prophet talk about a prophet he's a seer as well that God is showing him things that are happening in the king's bedchamber mm -hmm. the same same God that opened his eyes is opening up eyes today and so uh, it, it was discovered that the secrets of the king were being revealed to the prophet Elisha and they figured well we need to get Elisha we need to get him so they came out I mean uh, just just a, an army came out after one man and uh, his, his servant, his servant went out and saw all of these folk and chariots and, and uh, he, he was scared. He, he was frightened. And he's like, uh, he's like, master, a uh, prophet, uh, whoo, there's a whole lot of folk that's come after us. We in trouble. And the prophet said, don't be afraid. There are more with us than those who are against us. Uh-huh. And the prophet realized that the young man could not see what he was seeing, so he prayed, Lord, open his eyes. And when he opened his eyes, the Bible says, when the young man's eyes were open, he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And since he was with Elisha, the, the, the armies uh, were around him as well. God wants our eyes to be open so that we not be paralyzed by fear that we not be anxious and that we worry about no thing. Would you just encourage somebody, even if it's just to encourage yourself and say there's more with us than against us? Do you believe that today? Can we take a, just a moment and just praise the Lord? Can you make some noise in here? And you who are viewing online, would you just kind of do that right now? Right where you are? Come on. There are more with you than against you. Oh, I don't care if the government is against you. The government and the governments of the world are nothing to compare with the power of our awesome God. Come on once more. Let's praise the Lord for being more with us and against us. God wants us to see clearly. You got to turn to this text, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 21. Uh, Paul, the apostle, writes, inspired of the Holy Spirit, this beautiful prayer that I encourage you to pray over yourself and pray often, if not daily. He says, therefore, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, unveiling, exposure, uh, disclosing, and the knowledge of him that you might know him better. Note. The eyes of your heart, King James Version says, the eyes of your understanding, New King James Version, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know, that you may perceive, that you may understand, that you may grasp what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us, for us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, 
which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in, in, of God in the heavenly places, far above all principality and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age and also in that which is to come. And if you would continue to read over in chapter 2, you see that we, are, we have died with him, we have been raised with him, and made to sit together with him in heavenly places. If if we're seated together in Christ, this is a positional truth, seated together in heavenly places in Christ, he being the head of the body of which we are, the body of Christ, the many-membered body of Christ, even if you are the pinky toe on the left foot, everything that's got a name is under Jesus' feet, and it means it's under your feet too. You got to see it. You got to grasp it. Therefore, if you grasp it, you don't worry about anything. You don't worry about anyone because you can see clearly that no matter what Satan is up to, no matter what he's trying, no matter the weaponry he's using to try to destroy you, no weapon formed against you shall prosper prosper and every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment you shall condemn do I have any believers in the house come on if you can see it oh hallelujah 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 mm -hmm. uh, there's this occasion in scripture it's recorded in Mark chapter 8 verses 20 through 25 Jesus comes to Bethsaida and there was brought to him a blind man and, and, and begged him to touch him, touch him, touch him. Jesus, 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 healer, Jesus, healing, savior, touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. And when he had spit on his eyes, mm -hmm. <laughs> you want a ridiculous blessing sometime and you got to sometimes be submitted to some ridiculous things. Some of you are just, just, you're just too cute. You just, you just got too much swag. You just, you're just too educated. Won't even lift your hands in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Won't even, won't even holler. Won't even shout in the presence of the Lord. But you was shouting last week mm -hmm. when your favorite team won. Yeah, 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 yeah. I found myself hollering yesterday when America got those three. Those three, those three awards, gold, silver, and bronze with the swimming. I was like, yes! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Jesus spit on his eyes. And if ever you feel motivated to do that while ministering to somebody, you just better be led of the Lord. Uh, he asked the man, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Well, at least he saw something, but he wasn't seeing clearly. So Jesus put his hands on him again. Tap your neighbor and say, sometimes you need a second touch. And he made him look up, and he was restored and saw everyone clearly. God wants us to see clearly. To be able to see clearly is a blessing. I want you to just say this with me. Say, my eyes are blessed. Now, come on, one more time. Put it in the atmosphere. My eyes are blessed. Oh, yeah, I got some Bible for you. In fact, we already referred to this passage. I just didn't go down to verse 16 and 17, but Matthew 13, 16 and 17 says, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For assuredly, I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. I can see clearly now. Mm -hmm. Talk to yourself. Say, I can see clearly now. My eyes are blessed. I looked up this word, blessed. It's the very same word that Jesus uses in what's called the beatitude. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Blessed. This word, blessed, means 
to be supremely blessed. Uh, some translations say happy, but not like we use happy today where happy depends on certain things to happen in order for a person to be happy or joyful. We know that uh, uh, things don't have to happen for us to be blessed. We're blessed when God declares us to be so. It means to be fortunate. It means to be well off and blissful. This word in the Greek describes the person who is free from daily cares and worries because his every breath and circumstance is in the hands of the Lord who gives him peace no matter what's going on in the world. Does anybody here know about that peace that no matter what's happening in the White House, no matter what's happening in your house, no matter what's happening on Wall Street, no matter what's happening on Main Street, that you have a deep-seated sense of peace and a joy that the world didn't give and the world can't take away. You have an insight. You have a perception. You have a perspective that the world doesn't understand. That's why you can praise God when you got a bill due in the morning. That's why you can praise God when you got pain in your body. That's why you can praise God when your children are acting like the devil. That's how you can praise God when your spouse has forgotten their address. That's how you can praise God though they gave you a pink slip on Friday. That's how you can praise God because you see into a another world, another realm. I can see clearly now. Can I get somebody to hear to help me put it in the atmosphere again? Say, my eyes are blessed. Oh, 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 my eyes are so blessed because it's like the prophet said, quoting, uh, the apostle said, rather quoting the prophet, that is the apostle Paul saying, I has not seen nor ear heard, <laughs> neither has it entered into the hearts of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. How many people here are lovers of God? I love God. I'm not ashamed to say I love God. I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him. I love him with all my heart. And the word of the Lord is eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of those things that, to, to men that God has prepared for us. But the next verse says, the spirit has revealed them to us. God has revealed them to us by his spirit for the spirit searches all things even the deep things of God and I can't wait till next week to declare to you what you need this week that your eyes are open that you step into a realm of seeing that the anointing of the seer comes upon you that you see past the natural realm that you see into the spiritual realm that you get your eyes off of what's temporary and get your eyes on what is eternal because what's temporary it shall pass away but what is eternal will last forevermore do I have a witness in the house today can somebody help me just praise the Lord in advance with eyes open wide to getting out of debt to seeing the doctor say to you I don't know what happened but I don't see the cancer any longer feeling better in your body coming out of debt and walking in prosperity can I get somebody here to help me raise a praise to see and believe God for revival like we've never known before I just believe God for souls coming from the north south east and west I will not be dismayed by the evil in this land because where sin does abound grace does much more abound I've been praying I've been believing 
I've been expecting and I'm not going to let the devil cheat me out of my blessing and out of my joy. I've come too far to just be quiet and just settle down into doubt and unbelief. My eyes are blessed. I can see what my father sees. I got the mind of Christ and I believe God. Do you believe God with me? I want you to join me standing. <laughs> Glory be to God. And I want you to put your hands together as fast as you can. Clap as loud as you can and thank him for blessed eyes. Thank him for divine insight, for prophetic vision for revelation see yourself coming out of your predicament see the prison doors open and you walking in your deliverance see breakthrough oh blessed be the name of the lord whole nother part to share. I thought I was going to get it done today, but we'll hold it off till next week. I got a little bit more to share. I just get excited when I talk. Lord, y'all don't know. God. I'm seeing things I haven't seen before, y'all, and I am excited about it. And so I'm seeing things. I'm seeing things. I'm seeing things. I'm seeing things. I'm seeing things, I'm seeing things, I'm seeing things. Do you see? Can you see what I see? Can you, can you see what I see? 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 Can, can you, I see, I see, I see miracles. I see, I see healings. I, I see, I see angels. I see angels, 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 angelic visitations. I see, I see favor. I see, I see favor. Can, 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 you, can you help me help, help each other? Would you just look, at, look, them, look them up and down? Just look them up and down. And, and, and ask that person who's looking you up and down, say, what you looking at? Answer, say, I see favor all over you. Oh, Shabbat Hey, hey! Would you mind being generous and telling somebody else, I see favor all over you? I see it, I see it, I see it. Um, brother, brother Charles, I, I want you to just lift up your hands. Brother Charles Shepherd, just there in the rear. Um, here, here's a word from the Lord for you, a word of encouragement. Uh, this, you, you, I want you to expect it, though you may have felt like you've been overlooked in the past. Um, there's such favor, such favor that's coming your way. There's going to be promotions promotions promotion and uh, your 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 intelligence but it's not really because of your intelligence you're a hard worker and all of that but just something that's divinely orchestrated God's intervention and so be in that place of expectation um, there, there there's such a favor that's extended to you and and great promotion and I'm expecting to hear a wonderful testimony so don't worry about a thing God's God's opening doors that no man can shut and it's for you. And some of those things that in the past have been prevented because simply it's, God has something better for you. So just be encouraged today. Is there anybody here by the name Kyle? Kyle is your name. Kyle, is there anyone here named Kyle? Anyone? Uh, perhaps Kyle is viewing online. Um, but here's, here's the word uh, for you, Kyle. And, and please let, just identify yourself. Send us a note that, that you received this word, Kyle. Uh, you know, you've not, you've not always been in a place of just 
truly trusting the Lord, we've all been there. So um, this is not by any means to make you feel bad. This is, in fact, to uh, show you the love of God, his love extended to you, and that he's got your attention right now. He's got your attention now. And there's some things that have happened that have really brought, brought you to this place, some difficult things that have brought you to this place. But God has brought you this place to encounter him. And uh, things are getting ready to change now for you because he's got your attention. So have a listening ear and eyes that are wide open and follow in the steps that God has ordered. Uh, whatever you need to do as the right thing, you do that. And whatever you cannot do and only he can do, God will do that for you. But you got to trust him. Trust him now. Don't go backwards. Don't go to that place where you are vacillating. Don't be double-minded or double-spirited, but believe what you have before the Lord is going to be made manifest and the word that he gives to you today to encourage you. Now, here's another person, and my assumption could be uh, because my mother's name is Rebecca, maybe it might be my mother, but I'm not so certain it's for her, but certainly this word can minister to her as well. Is there anyone other than my mother named Rebecca in this house today? There's a couple of you. And so uh, I, I don't see it as one particular person. It may be simply several of you, several of you. And here it is. Here it is. The enemy has tried to steal your joy. He has tried to rob you of that which God has gifted to you. But in this hour and in this season, God's giving you to rejoice again like you have not rejoiced in quite a while. And so God has stepped into your situation to give you to rejoice and a peace that surpasses all human understanding. He says, don't worry about anything. I'm returning to you, restoring to you what the devil attempted to steal from you. Couldn't take it all. Oh my God, couldn't take it all. Couldn't take it all. And that which remains, God strengthens and gives you more. There's more in store for you. Can you help me praise the Lord for these individuals and with these individuals? Who in the house needs healing? Healing in your body. Just throw up your hands. If you didn't get it on that first wave, just lift up your hand. Keep your hand raised. If you see somebody's hand near you raised, I want you to help me and extend your hand toward these. Extend your hand to these in the name of Jesus. Oh, bless you. Bless you, Brother Ralph. Ralph, the Lord's hand be upon you even now, even now, and heal you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Not only for that which you have uh, in mind, but the other issues for what you have in mind is the most obvious but those other issues God minister his healing grace to you now and heal you completely and for each of these whose hands are raised father I thank you for your healing virtue released in this house to minister to these to mend them we, we even speak to those who are viewing us online those of us who are viewing online those of you get thank you those of you who are viewing online in the name of Jesus our hands are extended to you as well you foul spirit of infirmity we command you in Jesus name take your hands off of these the people of God cease and desist now in your maneuver against them and I thank you Lord Jesus that your healing virtue ministers to these now your anointing that removes burdens and destroys yokes uh, to the afflicted we say be healed and be made whole to you who are bedridden we say arise and be healed in the name of Jesus for you who've been suffering with chronic illness God deliver you now in Jesus name and we receive it by faith and we thank you for it can I get some believing folk to help me praise the Lord by faith and you who have received prayer for healing come on make this confession of faith while you're clapping your hand say by his stripes I am healed by the stripes of Jesus I am healed Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. By his stripes, I am healed. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Ah, oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Would you mind just basking in his presence just a little bit longer? And especially those of you who were just prayed for, come on. Come on. Come on. Those hands lifted again. Lord Jesus, I thank you for healing my body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that which is immediate and that which is progressive. Ah, uh, yes, Lord. Come on, you who are, you, you who are home viewing and you, you're bedridden, weak. Come on, by faith, 
by faith. By faith, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Do what you couldn't do before. By faith, by faith, arise and be healed. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. I believe it's colitis. God heal you and rid your body of it now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I thank you, Father. I thank you. I thank you for healing every ulcer, every ulcer, every ulcer in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you for healing fibroid tumors in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I praise you, Lord. I praise you. We declare it. We speak it into the atmosphere. And I thank you. Opening up blind eyes, even naturally so. Unstopping deaf ears, even naturally so. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Uh, somebody's suffering with arthritis and for the last week it has given you such discomfort, such pain. But God heal you now. God heal you now. Stretch out those arthritic limbs in the name of Jesus. Just start with its arm or hands. Just begin to stretch it out in the name of Jesus. 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 Listen, my my friend, my brother, my sister, now, now you, 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 you can go to heaven uh, with a body that's infirm, uh, but, 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 but your spirit needs to be healed. Your spirit needs, needs to be made alive. And if you have not received Jesus Christ as Lord before we conclude our time together here today, then today's the day to receive salvation. I want everybody just to bow your heads for a moment here in this place. And those of you who are viewing online, I want to connect with you as well. If you've stumbled on to our service today and, and uh, uh, well, you really haven't stumbled on it. It was God that led you to be a part today. But come on, is your heart right with God? If you cannot say yes. If you don't know him, if you've not been saved, if you've not been born again, today is the day of salvation. And so those of you who are viewing with me uh, online, uh, I want you to pray this prayer with me. And those of you who are here today, if you need Christ, if you need to be saved, just slip up your hand, your right hand, throw it up high enough and long enough for me to see it, to acknowledge it, and then you can put it down. I just want to know who I may be praying for today. Are you here today? Lights are dim, so it, I might miss you. And, and if, I, if I have my apologies, just pray along with me. And saints, would you just help me and help these even now? let's align with them and let's lift our hands and just pray this prayer with me pray this prayer with me I need a close up I need a close up camera pray with me say dear God in Jesus name I come to you acknowledging my need for salvation I repent of my sins I believe you raised Jesus from the dead that he is risen and that he is Lord. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Save me, deliver me, and set me free. I vow this day I will live for you for the rest of my life. Come on back, slider. Rededicate your life to the Lord. Say, I confess my sins. I rededicate my life to you. Help me, Lord, to get on track and to stay on track. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Angels in heaven are rejoicing. We'll do the same here. Come on, let's connect with heaven, saints. You who are online, do the same, would you please? Come on. If you join with me in prayer, I want you to simply do this. If you're here or if you're viewing online, simply text text right now. They're going to put the information on the screen there. Agape to 797979. If you need a church home, Agape is a great place to be. We're trying to uh, do contactless um, ministry right now and it's difficult but please understand why we do this. And so if you'd like to become a part of our house I'd like you to text new 2021 to 797979. Now if you're here and you pray to receive Jesus Christ, we're going to have some people from our Harvest Ministry outside and uh, they'll be there with the name tags on and uh, their hands lifted and you can recognize them and just go to them and we have some things that we'd like to put in your hands to help you as you begin your journey with the Lord. What a glorious day it's been. We went over just a little bit but isn't it hasn't it been wonderful? I'm grateful. Have you been blessed? I've been blessed by being here in the midst today 
And I pray the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich, that it rest upon each of you. The Lord, shalom, that you enjoy life to its fullness and without interruption. May you have a glorious, productive, fruitful week, and may you be healed and whole. Psalm 91, that no plague come near your dwelling. In Jesus' name. Do you agree with that prayer? Amen. Let me say this before we make our exit. Um, listen, I can't force anybody to do anything, um, um, but please be safe. And um, as you know, uh, this Delta variant uh, is increasing mostly in other parts of the nation, but we've experienced some spikes in the tri-state area as well. Um, I, I have been, Jesus is my vaccination. And Pfizer too. So I, 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 did, I did receive the vaccination and I'm, I'm, I'm still being mindful when I was in LA County, they went back, the, of course the day I get there, they went back to wearing masks inside whether vaccinated or not. Just want you to be safe. So if you've been hesitant for some reason and perhaps it's because you've not truly understood, there are some, there's some, um, le, there's some legitimate information out there for you. God give you discerning so that you're not um, be fed conspiracy lies and different things. I had the vaccination some, some time ago, um, and, and I'm, I'm, f I'm feeling good. I didn't have any adverse reactions, and I know that there's some debate uh, uh, even in the body of Christ concerning it. Uh, but now some of the people I understand that refused it for whatever reasons are begging for it in hospital rooms, and it's too late. And so just be mindful of your practices and of your habits. And I just ask that of you because I want to see you live and not die. I don't like funerals, especially doing yours. I want you to live and enjoy life to its fullness. Amen. That's my fatherly, apostolic, pastoral thing to you. Amen. Thanks so very much for joining us today. I trust the message has in fact enriched and encouraged you. If it has been a blessing to you, would you take a moment please and sow a seed into ministry here at Agape. Your seed sown will help us to reach people around the world and empower us to do even more effective and expansive ministry. And listen, here's something else I'd like for you to do. Please, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our online channel and become a part of our ever growing online family. Thank you in advance and share, share what we're doing here with others. Appreciate it and look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless.